After years of test transmissions, the BBC broadcast its first ever programmes in 1936. Critics said television would never catch on. And six years later, it's pretty obvious there couldn't have been more wrong. And this museum shows just how much the invention has developed. Two galleries have been dedicated to the history and technology of television, from the earliest experiments to the latest developments. These images are the world's first video recordings. They're a new addition to the museum. John Logie Baird, the inventor of television, developed the system to record television pictures. Using modern digital imaging techniques, the museum has succeeded in recovering pictures from his original recording. Coordinator Tony Booth says the museum is more than an education. I think it's wonderful that this place exists, largely because children have a more limited experience of TV and they see children's television, which is great, but it's, it's good for them to know what came before the programmes they watch these days. They can also have a wander around, pretend to be a cameraman, which they all love. <laughs> the museum also gives you the chance to take a trip down memory lane at their TV heaven room. We asked some local school children to watch some of the earliest children's programmes and compare them to today's children's BBC. Today's programmes are better than the others because you can't see the puppet strings like you can on the olden days ones. Look at Andy Pandy. I like the earlier ones better because the characters were funnier. <laughs> Basil Brush is funny but Otis, Otis, he does my jokes. Live at five! I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> Visitors to the museum can also have a go at reading the news, a regular feature of television since it started. Newsround itself is a part of television history. When we started nearly 25 years ago, we were the world's first children's news programme. This is Chris Rogers for Newsround in Bradford. And you can see more on TV60, on Blue Peter and tomorrow on BBC One. Have a great weekend and join us again on Monday live at five. Till then, bye-bye. The day since the British Broadcasting Corporation began the first high-definition television service. Yes, here at Studio 60, live at Television Centre, we're celebrating 60 glorious years of your favourite box in the corner, television. 60 years ago, believe it or not, this camera was state-of-the-art technology. And you weren't called viewers, you were called lookers and this is what you would have looked like. Give us a wave Romana. <laughs> Romana Denuncio in glorious <laughs> black and white but the birth of BBC television in 1936 was not the birth of television. What have a tin and a piece of string got to do with the invention of television in Britain? Well when John Logie Beard was a small boy he tried to communicate with his friends with this high-tech device but it didn't work very well. I said, it didn't work very well. And it got him going as an inventor. I said, it got him going as an inventor. Oh, I can hear you, Romana. At the age of 12, he built a dynamo and wired his home up to electricity. His was the first house in his hometown of Helenborough to have electric lights. Not bad for a 12-year-old. Absolutely, but his real passion was trying to send pictures using radio waves, television. But Baird's experiments were very, very dangerous. He wired together hundreds of batteries to try to power his television and he actually managed to create 2,000 volts. But he also managed to blow himself up in the process and was very, very lucky to survive. In 1925, Baird made an enormous breakthrough. He managed to transmit an image of a ventriloquist dummy called Stooky Bill to a television he called the Televisor. Hmm. This is one of Baird's original sets. There was only a tiny screen and the picture was made up of 30 lines. Today, TV uses 625 lines, so it was very difficult to see the image clearly. Nobody took Baird's work very seriously. The BBC was more interested in making radio programmes and many people in power thought that television was just a passing phase. However, by 1929, the BBC started experimental television transmissions. But not many people saw them because hardly anyone had a receiver, as TV sets were called then. OK, smile, Romana. 
Now, unfortunately for Baird, his competitors were making rapid progress with their own system, which used something called electronic scanning. Marconi and EMI developed an Emitron camera tube, and in 1935, it was decided that both systems should be tried out. Television had arrived. This is direct television from the studios at Alexander Palace. And now you're going to see and hear someone you know well. BBC News are from 1936. For the first few months after the launch of TV, the BBC made just two broadcasts a day, and they normally featured top pop combos like Eric Wilde's dance band. The Baird and Marconi systems were used on alternate weeks, but by February 1937, it was clear the Marconi format was better and Baird was dropped. The men in white coats were getting excited and their plans got bigger and bigger. Even the future King George VI decided the time was right to get his face on the telly. So they organised their first outside broadcast on the 2nd of May 1937, just in time to see the King being crowned. All was looking rosy. By 1939, nearly 20,000 households had a TV set. But then war broke out. An episode of Mickey Mouse was cut off mid-flow and it wasn't until six years later in 1946 that viewers got to see how the programme ended. Two days later, the first non-cartoon children's programme hit the screens. Children's Hour was broadcast live from Ali Pali once a week. TVs were getting cheaper. By 1953, there were around three million sets in homes across the country. And the one thing that really got them going was the Queen's coronation. The Beebs coverage was bigger and better than ever before. Over 20 million people tuned in, which works out as seven people huddled round every set. ITV didn't get a look in, but that's because there was no ITV. All that was to change. But we couldn't talk about TV 60 without getting some of the greatest celebrities of the past 60 years into the studio. Ask anyone over the age of 50 about their memories of children's television and one name. One name alone will be uttered. Yes, Muffin the Mule. Muffin first appeared in 1946 with Annette Mills and quickly became a legend. Say hello. Oh, he's in a hurry to go fishing. And we're very honoured because this is the original Muffin. Now, he's operated by strings, but because he's so old, we can't actually touch him. In fact, in those early days, all TV puppets had strings, including that next big name, Andy Pandy from Watch With Mother. Well, puppet shows became more adventurous and imaginative. Take Bill and Ben, for instance. The flower pot men appeared on the screens in the late 50s and were a great hit, even though they look a little rough and ready to our eyes. In the 60s, puppets decided they wanted to get involved in animation. These are the Pogles from the puppet show Pogles Wood, made by Oliver Postgate and Peter Fermin. It was one of the first animated puppet shows to hit the screen. But their most famous creations well, were the Clangers in the 1970s. And one for Tom. Oh, our plant. Uh, thank you. And uh, what do we do with them? But their most famous creations were the Clangers. In the 1970s, these little creatures lived on a tiny planet far, far away with their friend, the Soup Dragon. They were friendly individuals who spoke to each other by whistling. Oh, yes. Don't forget the soup. And guess what? They've come out of retirement for TV60. This is Major Clanger, Tiny, Small and Mother Clanger. <laughs> but puppets weren't just the property of children's TV. One of the most popular puppets of the 70s was the robotic dog that accompanied Doctor Who on his travels through time. And here... Here he is! Here is K9. He's looking pretty good for his age, isn't he? It's the only dog Enjoy I've ever it. seen that can rust. Yes, I'm not sure what absolutely. Mabel will think of him. But let's face it, we all know where puppets reign supreme. Children's BBC, of course. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you Gordon the Gopher. Gordon, please don't milk it. It's Blue Peter, OK? It's not going live. Now, Gordon, you're one of the biggest professional names I've ever met in my life. You've worked with all the big names that I've ever grown up watching. Philip Schofield, Sarah Green, 
But who, please tell me, is your favourite TV presenter? <coughs> me! Oh, thanks very much, Gordon. What? Oh, just the aardvark. Oh, thanks very much. What do you think, Romana? I don't know. I'm sure he said Romana there. <laughs> and if you want to see Muffin, the Clangers, K9 and Gordy, you can visit them in the Museum of the Moving Image in London. When Television Centre was built here in West London in 1959, it was the biggest purpose-built multi-complex of studios in the world, and it's still a world leader in all kinds of areas. Now over here is the production gallery. Inside is the producer and director who tell me what to do every Friday on Blue Peter. I'm hoping they're wearing makeup because here they are. Come on in. <laughs> but do you listen to him? You have to be very well behaved when you're in here. Now back in 1959, all television was in black and white, but here in Studio 60 we can broadcast in color and even stereo sound and coming very soon digital widescreen and interactive television over the last 38 glorious years one of the best shows around has to have been blue peter and last week we gave you the chance to choose a classic film yeah absolutely well this is quite special us being here it's usually Isn't the grown-ups that are allowed in here <laughs> <laughs> well, behave, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, listen to this a tv tastic ninety-five thousand and eleven people phoned in for their favorite clip so uh, the winner is john <laughs> leslie in his grueling endurance test with the royal marines in 1992 which had a staggering thirty-five thousand calls wow. that's more than people that owned televisions in 1936. a run vt i've always <laughs> wanted to see yeah, that and i'm in the production gallery such a show off. Hold! Okay, rear rank, just dress back slightly. Okay, quickly take your key off. Oh. I've washed my hands and my feet. Sensational, really. Okay, feet show with the pads, up the shoulders, rotate forward. Good. I can't feel my hands anymore. I feel as if I've done a course already. Right, so tap at the same time. Good, just fine. Oh, 22 pounds, you should be John, okay? okay. 25. 22, exactly. As good as you can, Leslie, get it on your back. Right, there Derek, give him a hand. Yeah. Good. It's difficult with no hands. Okay, then quickly line out in your group. This is a nightmare. Okay, Merrin, take charge of Leslie, get me through three. Hey, pick some shorts, it's more by Stand by, first group. Go! We've already marched half an hour. It's about five degrees, heel stones, and I've got, what, five miles left? Nightmare. Come on, Mr. Leslie, work hard. Can you go in, Merrick? Come on, Mr. Leslie, catch him up, catch him up. Come on, you pair, work yeah, hard. Merrick, take the left hand tunnel, and go the right hand tunnel. Come on, fellas, work hard. Come on, Mr. Leslie, catch him up in your left hand tunnel. Work hard in the tunnel, do not low. Come on, get on your hands and knees and crawl. Come on, Mr. Leslie, you're not having a holiday in there. You're taking far too long. Come on, let's go, come on. Come on, let's go, come on. Ow. Come on, let's go, and up, 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 let's go, come on. Come on, 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 right, in, come, come on, side, under him there. Come on, in, 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 come on, push him hard, let's get his legs, come on, in, head, 
Pull through, let's go. Come on in, John, your turn, take charge. Come on in, stand up, stand up, stand up. let's go. All right, take charge of him, take charge of him, hands on the edge, hold on the back. All right, you push him through. Stand take charge, sir, come on. Come on, stand by, let's go. Gosh, you think it's your best. One, two, three, down. Come on, push, come on, push him, push, 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 come on. And pull hard, come on, pull hard. Good. Okay, Get start. Sir. Come on, in. hand in, put your hand in, put your hand in the tunnel. Okay. Right into the tunnel. Hand come on, Carvel. Come on, Carvel. And right into it, John. Come on. That's it. Pull. Come on, pull him out. Let's go. That's it. Okay, spread on the hill. Let's go. Come on. Go. Let's go. Stand up. Let's go. Stand up there. Come on, Eddie. Move the dog. Spread in there. First round inside. Let's go. Off the road. Come on, John. Come on. Sit. Come on. Oh, come on, no. Andy, this tunnel here. No. And you go. Come on in. Come on. Straight in there. Get down and get through it. Let's oh. oh. go going off and get through it. Come on, drag yourself out. Come on, Leslie, help you come. There's another tunnel here. Oh, no. Quickly. Fuck. Come on. I can't go now. And now. Come on, stay out in the other tunnel. Straight through it. Good. Well done, Leslie, come on. Ow. Come on, drag yourself out the tunnel and stop whinging. You've got a long way to go yet until you're finished. You've got another tunnel yet? Come on, quickly. Come on, you're just causing a blockage in there holding the rest of my troop up. Come on. I was never going to end. You've got another tunnel yet? Straight through. Come on, let's go. Come on. That was the end of two and a half miles of obstacles. Now, just a four mile run back to camp. Head up, head up, keep going. Good, come on. My cars. My cars. Switch it out. Stand up straight. Got that That's better. better. Come on. Work hard. That's better. Fight it. That's it. Come on. Come on, John. Come on. Yes. Come on, last few yards. Keep going, keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep Okay, John, that's it. Come in. Stay there. Okay. Stay there. Alright, alright. Loosen that off. Keep breathing. Suck it in. Suck it in. Alright. Okay. Good boy. Alright. Alright. Take it from in and spit it out. Had I made the Royal Marines qualifying time of 72 minutes? That's it. You reckoned 80? Yeah. 72 minutes, 37 oh. seconds. Oh. All right. Just that last walk. Oh, that was... Oh. Let's take this kit off now, John. I think you've carried that enough for one day. Good fella. So excuse me, I... I can't really see much. <laughs> Whoa. I'm not surprised. You know which bit I would hate? The bit you have to go under the water and through that tunnel. Oh, definitely. Oh. What a fantastic achievement. Well done, John. Bye. But now it's back over to the TV 16 news desk for a news flash. Good afternoon. This is the news from the BBC, September 22nd, 1955. Today marks the birth of channel hopping with the launch of ITV. At first, very few people could get this new channel, but by 1958, four-fifths of the country could tune in. The fight for TV supremacy was on. Nine years later, the BBC launches its counter-offensive, a second station imaginatively called BBC Two. But a power cut strikes on the opening night. Good evening. This is BBC Two. Not put off, BBC Two turns television into colour vision in 1967. Snooker on TV at last makes sense. TV tension increases over the next few years as all three channels extend their output. 
but it takes another 15 years to think up a new station, let alone what to call it. Meanwhile, other companies are looking to the sky for inspiration. In 1989, satellite TV beams its way into the British history books. Couch potatoes have never had it so good. We've never had our breaks on the BBC, but in the early days of TV, we did have interludes, long gaps between programmes with test cards and short films like the famous Potter's Wheel or musical performances. Do you know what, Tim? I feel a bit of an interlude coming on right now. Nice. <laughs> well, we take a break from TV60. Our interlude is provided by Maestro of the Classical Guitar. From his new double album, this is Astorias, played by the one and only John Williams. <laughs> so difficult to Imagine play classical play guitar. Like I know. Well, ever since TV started, people have turned studios into a million different places. And this is a set designer's model for the Pets Win Prizes set. It looks like a lovely, beautiful garden. Lovely green it? grass mm. they've got there. And this one over here is the designer's model for Smart. It's very, very arty and very beautifully mm -hmm. coloured. It certainly is. Now, scenery has been traditionally made from wood, metal, gauze and canvas techniques, that, thank you Mabel, that TV stole from the theatre. But as Katie discovered earlier this year, the television show, computer generated scenery and blue screen technology, which is virtual reality, is set to take the place of canvas screens and wooden stages. I had my head chopped off in that clip, but even <laughs> Blue Peter will benefit from virtual reality, even though for the time being we're sticking with metal, wood and canvas for the actual scenery. Absolutely. Well, this is a cardboard model our directors used to plan. We're in the studio to put all the bits, including us a lot, isn't Aha, it? Aha, but so. from this week, out goes the cardboard and in comes the computer. This virtual production planner has been designed by the BBC along with Cult Virtual Reality, and it's to help plan the studio now on this beautifully 3D mm. and what you can do is actually move all the furniture and bits and pieces around so if you can see the blue neon of the ship there if I go to the plan I should be able to drag it forward come along play the game no, here on. we go on the plan click on there like that drag it down to the next to the presenter yeah, and we'll magic. see what it looks like go back to there Look at this. There it is, next oh. to the presenter. It all looks a bit squashed, so I don't think we'd use that one, would you, Amanda? No, I don't but, um, think so. But this is the great good. thing with it. You can see what works and what doesn't, and you can also click to different camera angles. That's camera one. 
camera two wow. and camera three. It's a rather familiar looking presenter. Yes, yeah, it's like <laughs> between, between the eyebrows, I think. Yeah. Absolutely. It's amazing because directors don't even need to leave their seats to, to move around all these bits of scenery. It's amazing. Very, very clever. It's mm -hmm. the way forward. Absolutely. I wonder if they'll ever get a virtual reality Mabel, though. Come on over here, Mabel. <laughs> it's time to delve into our own virtual filing cabinet. Here's some more TV60 news in the F files. If you were watching News Round, how about a trip to the Museum of Photography, Film and Television in Bradford? And it's not just history. If it's the future that excites, why not spin out on an amazing virtual reality TV experience? And there's always good old-fashioned news reading. Eat your heart out, Michael Burke. As you can see, Gordon's been out with his shaky F-cam filming his chums. Yep, we're talking puppets. You can catch up with those TV stars from Sesame Street just spitting image at the Fantasy in Action exhibition at the Gardner Centre in Brighton. Even good old Muffin the Mule will be there shaking his strings. But the beauty of TV60 is that you can experience it all without getting off the sofa. So you couch potatoes on Sunday at 7pm, tune in for a celebrity gala evening with Auntie's all-time greats. Join the stars as they browse through the highlights and the lowlights of television history. Yes, <laughs> tune in, turn on, burn out, transmission over. <laughs> Absolutely. And we'll be back to start the next 60 years of TV on Monday. And Romana will be climbing a mountain right here in the studio. We'll see you then. Have a fantastic weekend. Bye. Bye. -bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye, Bye. Come on, Rainbow. Come on. Come on. This is no, excellent. Yeah, yeah, okay, let's meet Tim. Tim's the world. Let's have a pan of one. Go get it. Can you know that? You should know that. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it.